And that's the, that's the actual business here. Uh, that's the, pays, the only bit that pays any revenue, that's for sure. That's, that's what I define a business as. And that business, looking back on last year, was producing $115 billion of revenue and had a 49% operating profit margin. Hey there, my name is Ray Zalman and the person that you just saw in that clip, that's Terry Smith. He's the CEO of Fundsmith and yeah, arguably one of the best and certainly one of the most inspiring investors in the world. His investment fund has almost 40 billion US dollars in assets under management. And just recently, Terry Smith invited, yeah, Fundsmith shareholders to the fund's annual shareholder meeting. And during this meeting, Terry Smith and his colleague Julian Robbins discussed many of the fund's holdings. But one stock discussion stuck out in my opinion. And that was the discussion surrounding Facebook or Meta platform. Zuckerberg's, yeah, metaverse ambitions, but also Facebook's stock valuation. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the thoughts shared by Terry Smith and his team. Let's go. All right, just real quick. If you want to support what I'm doing on this channel and enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and a comment, of course, would also be much appreciated. Okay, if we now turn to Meta platforms. Well, to structure this video, I will actually stick to Fundsmith investing philosophy, which consists of three pillars. Buy good companies, don't overpay, do nothing. So if we focus on the first pillar for now, buying good companies. Well, every single year during the shareholder meeting, Terry Smith stresses that he likes to look at five operational metrics to measure business quality. Return on capital employed, cross margin, operating margin, cash conversion, and then some metric to measure a company's debt level. So if we just take a brief look at two of those metrics for Facebook, then we can see that return on capital employed over the years has almost always been above the S&P 500 2021 average of 16%, and especially in the most recent years above 20%. And Facebook's operating margin has also been absolutely spectacular. For most years, pretty much close to 40%. And that's also well above the operating margin of the average S&P 500 company, which in 2021 was only 17%. Now, the reason why Facebook's stock has performed so poorly in the most recent month is partly because growth slowed, partly because investors are increasingly worried about competition and TikTok specifically, and partly because investors are worried about the impact of Apple's and Google's announced advertising identifier changes. I think I've discussed these issues at length in two of my previous videos on Facebook. But another part of the yeah, Facebook bear thesis is that Mark Zuckerberg will spend literally tens of billions of dollars to gain a yeah, first mover advantage in the metaverse space. And investors have their doubts whether this spending will actually create any value for shareholders or whether Zuckerberg will just burn a lot of cash to yeah, make his vision of the metaverse come true. I think it is very apparent that Zuckerberg himself believes in the future of the metaverse and he's willing to bet big. You could argue that he's yeah, willing to go all in. He's incredibly committed to the idea as he literally renamed the ent entire company to reflect that yeah, shift. Just a few months ago, Zuckerberg said the following. Today, we are seen as a social media company, but in our DNA, we are a company that builds technology to connect people. And the metaverse is the next frontier, just like social networking was when we got started. So as an investor, and as a Facebook investor in particular, you better very carefully consider whether you think the metaverse is actually the next big thing and whether AR and VR devices are the next yeah, major computing platform. And of course, this is something that Fundsmith discussed as well. So here's what yeah, Julian Robbins, who's actually the head of research at Fundsmith, had to say about Facebook's metaverse ambitions. I think there is a view out there that, that, that to use a, an, an oil analogy, that Facebook is off drilling some speculative well in some very obscure part of the world that nobody else is interested in. And that is just not the case. Uh, I have a quote here from Tim Cook, the chief executive of Apple. This area is very interesting to us. Uh, a quote from, from Mark Zuckerberg, this is not something we're going to create on our own. What, what, what they are doing at the moment 
is spending a lot of money on data centers, because clearly to power the metaverse, you're going to need a much more powerful set of data centers than just to, to provide static photographs or even short videos. But, they, but it is something which I think is been seen as kind of some sort of revolution, some kind of uh, expedition into the unknown. I, I think it's more, it's more really evolution to the degree that, and when you think about some, some things like gaming, that's, you know, they're already, a lot of them are performed in the metaverse. Obviously, there are a lot of headsets out there already. Uh, we're probably waiting for Apple to produce the killer headset or the killer pair of glasses. I think this is something, I, I personally think the people who, who treat it as something weird and speculative, I, I, as Terry said in answer to the last question, I think when we, if, if we meet back here in five or particularly 10 years time, I think we'll probably look back in amusement that we thought the metaverse was something weird, because I think we'll all be living in it then. So basically what he's saying is that he thinks the metaverse is actually a real thing and that it is not just a speculative bet with yeah, the odds of it being a major success being very low. No, Julian Robbins said that he thinks it's actually quite an interesting area and he backs it up with a quote, quote from Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple. And yeah, it is assumed that Apple itself is developing AR and VR classes. And just to add to this a little here, here's what Tim Cook actually said about the metaverse during yeah, Apple's most recent conference call back in January. Question. Okay, and how are you thinking about the metaverse opportunity and Apple's role in that market? Well, that's a big question, but we're a company in the business of innovation. So we're always exploring new and emerging technologies. And I, you've spoken at length about how this area is very interesting to us. Right now we have over 14,000 AR kit apps in the App Store, which provide incredible AR experiences for millions of people today. And so we see a lot of potential in this space and are investing accordingly. Yeah, and in that clip of Julian Robbins that you just said, he also mentioned gaming. In the gaming world, AR is actually already a thing. And Facebook definitely seems to have a head start in this space. In 2021, for instance, Facebook sold 8.1 million Oculus VR headsets, which is actually, yeah, more than the number of Xbox consoles sold by Microsoft in the yeah, very same year. They only sold 8 million consoles. And I can also show you the top downloads in the App Store during the last Christmas period. And again, here the Oculus app was actually ranked in spot number one. And so, yeah, even though Facebook's so-called reality labs revenue is almost negligible in the yeah, great scheme of things. As of 2021, this segment represents less than 2% of total revenue. It is nonetheless growing rapidly. The compounded annual growth of Matter's reality labs revenue over the past two years is actually an impressive 113%. So if growth can actually continue on this growth trajectory, Oculus may actually eventually make yeah, a more meaningful contribution to Facebook's total revenue. Personally, I'm not sure if I entirely agree with yeah, Fundsmith assessment here. Quite frankly, I think if the metaverse is actually the future, when the metaverse becomes part of everyone's everyday life, and if Facebook will be a leading player in this space, is probably what I would call an unknowable unknown. So there is no way to predict this with any reasonable degree of certainty. Now, another thing that I want to highlight in this video is how Terry Smith himself thinks about yeah, Zuckerberg's investment in the metaverse. So let's take a look at another clip. Um, but there's, a, there's a chap called um, uh, Nick Sleep, who was a fund manager, who did a, a, a famous sort of, a, not, not analysis, but he, he talked to his analysis of Costco, the, uh, the US uh, club retailer. And, uh, and he pointed out that Costco operated on lower um, uh, margins than, uh, than most retailers, about half. Uh, so you know, if, if Walmart's on 25, they're on 12 or 13 or something like that. And that their operating margins, if Walmart's on three and a half, they're on two or so 1.7 or something like that. And he said, that's deliberate. And furthermore, they could at any moment just go and increase the prices, probably double the margins up to, uh, up to Walmart's level. Would it be a better business? So we currently own the digital advertising business on a P of about 14, and they're spending all this other money out there. Um, the question to ask ourselves is not whether or not, uh, sometimes not always whether or not that's kind of, because it's overlaying the financial outcome of our digital advertising business adversely, because it's a spend after all. It's whether if they stop, whether their future will be better or worse. 
Right? And I mean, the, the, the metaverse is one that people are like because of the change of name and because it is a new thing and so on. So, but there's a lot of other things that they're spending money on, which um, yeah, they might work or they might not work, but they're certainly very interesting. I mean, they, you know, the next great market for a number of things, possibly, possibly, not just um, uh, social media and communications, but also maybe cosmetics, is the thing that, uh, as I'm looking at you, Ian, uh, is, uh, is above the left-hand side of your head called Africa. <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, you know, Meta is laying a fiber optic cable around Africa, around the coast of Africa, which I believe is about as long as the circumference of the world, basically, uh, because all those people in Africa, which might be a potential market for its services, um, certainly aren't going to be an actual market for services they can't access it. So what Terry Smith is talking about here is the importance of businesses reinvesting their profits to grow their business. And if you want to simplify the yeah, capital allocation options every CEO has, well, then they can either distribute the company's profits to shareholders or they can use that money to yeah, build new factories, to spend money on marketing, to increase the, their company's reach, to reach more customers to strengthen the yeah, consumer's brand awareness, or as in the case of Facebook, to build new data centers. And I think most investors, those that want to grow their wealth and not just preserve it, well, they should seek to find businesses that actually prioritize reinvesting profits back into the business so that they can compound that money internally, which is actually, actually a tax-free way to yeah, compound your wealth. On the other end of the spectrum, you have companies that have no growth left and that thus have to pay out the cash they generate to shareholders, either via dividends or via stock buybacks. I would say this isn't necessarily bad, but as an investor, you will possibly have to pay taxes on that money. And you yourself will have to find other vehicles in which you can then invest that money at attractive rates. And I think what you need to understand here is that a stock's long-term performance is dependent on the underlying revenue growth of yeah, the underlying business. I really like the yeah, following excerpt from the book, Nothing But Net, 10 timeless stock picking lessons from one of Wall Street's top tech analysts that Twitter user Max Koh shared the other day. Tech investing requires a different mindset. Traditional financial textbooks will focus their readers' attention on earnings, maximizing of profits, share buybacks and dividends. Tech investors need to think differently because tech investors are focused on growth. So when companies begin to aggressively ramp up profitability levels, the skeptical tech investor should ask, don't you have growth initiatives to invest behind? And when companies begin to pay a dividend, the critical tech investor should ask, that's it? You've run out of ideas to grow your business? So you're retiring and returning cash to shareholders? And Terry Smith, well, he seems to share this mindset. Sure, he likes to invest in profitable businesses. That's probably why he missed Amazon, which he also talked about during this shareholder meeting. But he also makes very clear that he thinks Facebook could be much more profitable. Operating margins could be much higher if Facebook just wanted to and stopped reinvesting profits. And this is actually something he does not want to see right now. And obviously Zuckerberg is not willing to slow down. He's not yeah, retiring. During the Q4 call, Zuckerberg actually said, in 2021, we expect these investments, he's speaking of the investments in the metaverse, to reduce our overall operating profit by approximately 10 billion US dollars. And I expect this investment to grow even further for each of the next several years. And this brings us to Fundsmith's second pillar, don't overpay. I'm sure most of you are probably very well aware of the stock price decline Facebook experienced over the last couple of weeks. If you consider that Facebook still fairly aggressively reinvests money into segments that are actually losing money, well then Facebook's current stock valuation may actually seem very compelling. And this is something Terry Smith also talked about during the shareholder meeting. Yeah. I mean, just to add to that a little, uh, Ian, if I may, I mean, what we've got, meanwhile, looking into the, the core business of, uh, of, uh, of Meta or Facebook, uh, while, while that's going on, um, is a business which you know, is in uh, social media and communications. So it's got the original Facebook brand and obviously it's got Instagram, it's got uh, WhatsApp uh, there. And people often get very hooked up on the number of uh, daily average users, about two billion apps, uh, and so on, what they're doing. The real business, of course, is digital advertising. It's got about seven million people in business who advertise on it. And that's the, that's the actual business here. Uh, that's the, pays, the only bit that pays any revenue, that's for sure. That's, that's what I define a business as. And that business, looking back on last year, was producing $115 billion of revenue and had a 49% operating profit 
profit margin, which um, save you a lot of strenuous arithmetic means that we own this stock, that business, on a, on a P of about 14. Right? Now, you know, obviously, you know, the, the share price performance has been poor recently, very poor, but it certainly says that we're owning that digital advertising business oh, pretty cheaply, uh, I would suggest, uh, at the moment. I mean, if, uh, if it weren't doing any of this metaverse stuff, and we've got a, a slide there which you can see for the, uh, the investment which uh, Julian's been referring to, um, we would have that digital advertising business exposed without any of this spend. So Terry Smith certainly seems to believe that Facebook's stock is cheap right now. Obviously, he did not reveal whether they are buying more here. But I would, see, I would be surprised if they didn't add to their yeah, already existing position. And in a way, I think the following tweet sums up the idea that Terry Smith just articulated. Good thing about investing in Facebook is that metaverse AR VR potential is not priced into the stock. It is actually dragging it down. It's an interesting stock because of that, I'd say. And personally, I have actually done a fairly comprehensive Facebook DCF valuation in which I outline all of the risks that the business is currently facing. And I present three different scenarios. So a bull case, a base case and a bear case. And, then, and I assign an intrinsic value estimate to each case. So if you're interested in matters valuation, please check out the following video. Take care.